So welcome everyone uh, for today's webinar. It was a long time ago because I was waiting for our new release, of course, Flexi 22. And today I will show the main key features of the new version. Um, so we have launched some nice uh, new features in this uh, build. And today I am using the latest build that is online on the cloud and it's build number 3760. So if you're not having a 3760 build number, please install uh, via the cloud if available. If you're a reseller, you need an NFR license, a demo license, you can also get in touch with us. <clears throat> okay. So today I will show the SCI Connect platform, a new production dashboard um, that we have launched. I'm showing new features in Production Manager. And especially we have a very nice new tab in Production Manager for the DTF and the DTG applications. First of all, I will start with um okay the, also the webinar is being recorded um this webinar can also be rewatched on our um, youtube channel and you can um uh, and all the um attendees will have also a follow-up email so you can rewatch the webinar uh whenever you want or if you want to share it with your colleagues perfect so um I will start first with the Unicode. So Flexi 22 is now Unicode, meaning the program langu language can be set uh, independently from the operating system language. Um, for example, uh, one could run in Flexi, uh, one could run Flexi in Japanese while the Windows language setting is in English. So especially for those special characters and text tool, it's very nice to have our Flexi 22 now in Unicode, as well for importing files with uh, special characters, native characters. Um, we can now import export without any issues. If in the future you are discovering some hiccups with this, please get in touch with our support with me so we can take a look. <clears throat> but for now, especially for our Scandinavian colleagues, there's no need to um, change the Windows language um, to the uh, yeah to the Scandinavian language or or another language to uh, to work with text and with files with special characters. So Unicode, <clears throat> very nice. Um, so development did a nice job here to make our our Flexi now a Unicode program. Um, as well, what is new in Production Manager, you will see when installing Flexi and you add a driver, it will install the driver files from the network. So we have separated the printer drivers from the core program. Um, so we can now easily with development update the driver files and make updates via the network. Uh, as well, if the if we launch in new Flexi 22 versions and um, in, in new builds, new uh, models, we can always update the driver files and they can be re-downloaded. So we don't have to uh, reinstall the whole core program or connect via TeamViewer to uh, apply uh, the driver files. Um, meaning as well, if there is no network connection, we can always download uh, as support team. We can download the files separately from our cloud and we can connect uh, and, uh, and provide the files with a zip or with a download link. Um, I see someone has already a question. Um, I'll, I'll first do the webinar and afterwards there will be a Q&A uh session so uh, i see roger asking a question for a driver file uh driver painter uh we get in touch after the webinar 
Okay, so printer driver files are now separated from, from the core program, so we can update the drivers whenever we want. As well, we made some uh, improvements to the user interface. So as you can see now, you can see a small thumbnail of the of your jobs in Production Manager. If you have, it's very nice. If you have a list of 100 jobs, you can already see a small thumbnail, a visual, uh, so you don't have to open the job or open the the job properties. You already have a preview of the job. Those small things can uh, can make life always easier, of course. As well, one last nice um, a nice thing is you can reorder your devices in the device menu bar. So if you go to view and reorder devices, you can switch the position of your devices. So if you add a new printer and you want to put it on the first in, in first place, you can just select the printer and select up or down to reorder your device. So this option is available in uh, view, reorder devices. Okay, so we have small thumbnails, we have reordered devices in production manager. We want to make it more attractive. Any questions here? Ariel, reorder also with drag and drop? No. So for the moment, you have to go to reorder, uh, to view, reorder devices, select the device type, and select up and down to move the queue uh, to another position. So no drag and drop. Uh, it's uh, not yet, let's say. OK. We also have launched uh, an improved nesting function. So if you have a nested job now, so I have a nested job here with seven jobs, and I want to add an extra job to the nest, then I don't have to unnest the job first and nest again, but I can just drag and drop the job in our existing nest. There will be a pop-up message saying, do you want to move the job in the nest job? And then I select yes. And automatically the nested job, uh, the job will be uh, added to the existing nest. So you don't have to unnest existing jobs anymore. You can just simply uh, um, drag and drop here the job into the nested job. I have a question from Christoph. Could in the future client with a V22 use drivers from a V23? These are questions we don't, I don't have the answer yet. Um, we just launched uh, version 22 and we, we are uh, monitoring everyone who is downloading the printer driver files. Um, so let's see, it's depending the driver. Okay, I have a question of the ICC profile, uh, Lee. Um, so yes, if um, if the nested job, the existing nesting job is having settings, the drag and drop will apply the all the print settings for that uh, particular file as well. So it will migrate all the uh, settings of the nested um, of the nested job. Uh, question for, from Marcel. So there is no production manager yet for um, Mac operating systems, only a designer suit. Perfect. Okay. So we have improved nesting. We have, uh, we order devices in production manager. Um, let's go to another very nice key feature called the transparency tab for DTF and DTG. Um, let's see. I will add a, I will use my Latex 700W driver to show you the feature as 
the transparency tab is available for all the apps. So transparency tab, I open, I import the file, I'll open the file. And what you can see in the new Flexi 22 version is an extra tab called transparency tab. So if I select the transparency tab, it will show you the file and with some options for transparency. First of all, very important section here is transparent background. So what I want to do is I want to make this file transparent. Um, so I want to remove the black uh, background from the file. So I select create transparent background and I select the, back, the black background with the pipette. Okay. And I can adjust the tolerance to make more smooth edges as well as select similar areas. So it will also remove the inside black parts of my artwork. So select similar areas and you'll see the whole um, black background is now transparent. Um, in this transparency tab, very uh, useful for DTF and DDG, we can already apply our white settings. So we have our transparency. Um, if I have color mode with white, or my driver allows me to use white options, we can already in the transparency tab select a white option. For example, use transparency mask. As well, we can set the density of our white channel. So in this case, we are using 100%, but if the white density needs to be 70%, we set 70 in the white density tab here. So if you select white and use transparency tab and check the output channel preview, you will already see that the white data is applied. So in a few clicks, you can make a file, either vector or um, a bitmap file. You can make the background transparent and apply a white uh, layer to it. Of course, you have also some other white options. For example, variable under or inverted variable under. So inverted variable under meaning more white where for, for the white parts and less white for black parts. So, or darker parts, let's say. So if we check output channel preview, select, you'll see there will be more white data generated for the lighter colors and less white data for the uh, darker colors. So a very, very nice solution in this case for our DTF and DTG users. Uh, what is the benefit here is we don't have to use a third party designer or our flexi design suit to make the transparency or to apply the white layer. In a few clicks in the transparency tab, you make a transparent background and you apply the white, um, the white channel. As well for DTG, for more breathability, some people use it, is removing data in texture patterns. So if I select this, you'll see there will be small squares um, generated for more breathability. So it will um, allow some allow me to stretch the uh, print on the textile. Uh, you can either use squares or cir circles. You can set also the dimension and the drop of the texture. Um, you will see in the output channel preview that my white channel also um, is uh, generated with those uh, with that texture pattern. So this is also a very nice, uh, easy to use feature for our DTF uh, slash DTG applications. So this is one of our key features for Flexi22, the transparency tab. There's also one extra uh, feature here for contour cut paths. That is very nice, but I will show later. Um, Christophe, 
Um, also usable for varnish. Um, in this case, we have our white channel, but if you have also varnish in the driver, there will be also a channel for varnish. So also for varnish, there will be also a setting here and it will also generate a varnish channel. Contour cut, yes, we also have our contour cut path here that I will show now in our new extra key feature is called contour cut paths in production manager. So I will show it with our lace logo. It's just a JPEG file. So if I go to transparency tab and I make the background transparent, so I go to create transparent background, I select the white background and I add some tolerance to make really the edges very smooth. And now I can apply a contour path around the um, image. So I select create contour path. Okay. And you will see, I don't know if it's visible in on your screen, but you can see already a magenta cut contour line around my image. And as well, I can set an offset, um, for, uh, an offset, so an inline or an outline offset. So let's say two millimeters. And you will see an offset of the cut contour line. So I'll show it with an offset of 10 millimeters, for example. And you will, you will see clearly a very nice contour path around uh, the image. Um, there is also an option with holes. So if you have an if you have the transparency as well inside uh, the image, let's see if I can make it select similar areas. So I remove also the white um, inside um, letters. I can select with holes, and you will see it will also apply the cut contour in the holes of the artwork. Okay. Um, if I apply the contour path here in the transparency tab, there also there will be also a new cut tab visible in uh, the job properties. So I select the cut tab and the contour um, driver options will be available. So there will be a contour path available and here I can make my um, cut strategy. Uh, okay, my cut strategy. In this case, I was having the Kungsberg file support as we have now also an option for our Kongsberg drives. So also a new feature, we have cutting drivers for Kongsberg ESCO cutting machines. Okay, so overall, to summarize this new transparency tab, we have our transparent background feature, especially very nice for DTF, DTG market, as we can already apply when using white layer, we can already apply a white channel, for example, transparency mask. We can already apply our contour path um, on our artwork. As well, we can remove data in texture patterns for more breathability, especially, especially for our DTG, direct to garment applications. Marcel, nice feature request. We are working on this. So for now, it will still use the bounding box um, of our file. Um, but we can also, let's see, make the tile smaller. Let's see if this will apply it. Oh, it's nesting the file. Um, let's remove the Kongsberg. No, I don't think this will be a workaround yet. So for the moment, it will use the bounding box. Um, but if yeah, if the if the bounding box is not that wide, there will be not much 
media wasted. For for now, it's not it's not possible to to crop to crop the file yet. Of course, we are working on a shaping nesting in production manager. We're working on this concept. Uh, so at the end, we can make transparent, create trans um, create contour cuts and nest the jobs. So this will be um, a very nice uh, project for the future. Christophe saying, Andrew, first of all, do you have to to clean up the areas and edges? Um, so for transparency, we have the tolerance mode that will already cover 99% um, to smoothen the, the file. As well, I have to say, um, additional to that, that how um, the quality of your file is also important. If you have a very low uh, pixeled file, a small file, um, there will be, of course, uh, it will be not so smooth. Uh, Christophe, double click on the existence to select them in the crop window. Um, crop window. Let's see. Um, mm, okay, we can try something like this. <clears throat> but we'll see our Kongsberg uh, marks are not changing automatically. It's something to test out, but okay, most of the customers are not using for DTF. They are not using crop marks in this case. So, okay, uh, Christoph, we can maybe cover this later. Um, okay, any other questions regarding this transparency new tab in Flexi 22? What about the Opus marks? So we can we can add Opus marks. Uh, I don't have a Suma driver or an HP driver. So if it's possible with all the with all the marks that are available in the production manager. Uh, Ariel dashed lines. Um, for now, the contour cut path will be. Um, a closed path. Um, question here, Andreas, a bit late, I'm not sure if I talk, but it's possible to fill everything with within the contour with white. Um, if I have the file here and I have white color modes, use transparency, I have all those uh, white options available. So probably if you select solid under or use transparency mask, it will fill. Um, it will it will fill a white data layer. I'm not sure if that's your question. Um, a question of Sylvain. I didn't understand the goal of the suppressed data in the texture. Okay, so. We have an option, remove data in texture patterns. Let me sh see if I have an example here of, uh, I don't have an image of an example, but it will, it's mostly used for direct to garment printers. Um, so it will remove some data. So it will make the print more stretchable. That will be the whole uh, purpose. Uh, Andreas, maybe we can cover this after the webinar. Okay. Um, so we showed transparency tab. We showed the create contour paths uh, also in the transparency tab. So these are new features in production manager. We have improved nesting. Okay. Let's see what else we have. In Flexi 22, reprinting orders. So there is an option now in Flexi 22 to 
to save your files as an order. So imagine I select these two files here and I want to save them as an order to, for example, link them to a certain project or to a certain customer ID. So select the files, right mouse click, and I can select create order. When I select create order, it will pop up uh, a box with an, uh, the possibility to add an order ID. So if this can be a quote ID or something else that's something else that is referring to uh, the specific order or to the customer or date, for example. Let's say order ID, I'll keep it like this. Customer name is, for example, as international. I can set an order date, let's say today, and I can add some additional comments. When I press OK, the files are saved as an order. And if I want to use the order in, in the future, so let's say next month I need to reorder this specific uh, reprint or repro reproduce this specific order, I can go to edit, uh, to file, and select order reprint. And in the order reprint box, there will be the list of all the orders. You will also see the dimensions as well as the job names uh, with customer name, comments, and order date. You can delete the order, but I can as well add and hold the order in the queue. So if I select that, you will see the files will reappear in Production Manager. You also have the uh, possibility, availability, to select Send Now, and it will uh, automatically um, uh, send the order to my printing devices. Question of Christophe, does it store the read data as well? It will re rip the files. So it will only uh, store the original uh, file locations, let's say. So it will re-rip the data. What I recommend is use add and hold and reopen the jobs, reopen the nest, for example, and uh, check the color settings or the preset is, that is being used. The order reprints are stored in the temp files. So with a new um, fresh installation, the orders will be not there. So make sure if there is a new installation, um, the install shield will ask to uh, copy all the previous settings from uh, version one to version two. And then in this, um, yes, in that situation, you can select uh, copy um, settings and they will also copy all the jobs and the settings. Um, so very nice um, tool. So you can create orders, you can manage them, and you can easily uh, set them back in your queue. Question of Marcel, can you share the orders with other production managers? In this case, no. So um, it's a it's a good question. I never test, tested it before. So you can also search for orders. You can delete it uh, to other production managers. I don't think this will be possible for now. So only local orders will be available. Nothing, uh, nothing related via the network. Okay, so this is our this is our last um, key feature of Flexi Twenty Two. Can you use a network folder in Christoph? Uh, of course, you can use a network folder, but how in 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 which purpose? <clears throat> no, in, th that's not possible. All the orders are stored in the root folder 
of the Flexi installation and you will have to copy it manually in this case. There is no option to share the orders via the network, no. Or it's not recommended. Maybe there is a workaround, but it's not recommended. Uh, Lee, they're using HP Latex 800W and HP Latex 64 Plus cutter barcode system. These, the barcode system is, of course, available for these drivers. Do you have a question regarding HP Latex, um, regarding the drivers? Um, let's see. So I have a file here. Let's add a sample file. I will also add the HP cutter. Now add a cut contour job. Contour cut test. Okay, make some copies. And have a barcode ID. Let's say create order. Order ID is barcode tests. Customer error. Lee. Okay. And when I select file, order reprint, I have the new order in the list. Add and hold. And it will add the job again in the production manager with the barcode ID. What about the cutter? So in this case, only my print cut jobs and original files are stored in the reordered prints as it's called print reorder. It's not called cutting reorder, meaning it can save our print and cut shop, but I don't think it's uh, possible to let me see, maybe I'm wrong. Let's just generate the cut shop. Um, rip. We'll have to send it. <clears throat> Uh, it's something we need to test. Uh, no, it's not possible to make an order of a cut shop. So only of the original print and cut file or the EPS file or the PDF, we can uh, make uh, a reorder of the print. Last but not least, I want to show our new production dashboard called SCI Connect. So when installing Flexi 22, in the install shield wizard, there will be an option to select download SAI Connect. So available for all 22 users. And also in 22, there will be an SAI Connect shortcut in the designer. Um, it's a it's an, ext uh, ex uh, an extra application that will be installed. Um, and when you open SAI Connect, you will have to um, log in with your cloud credentials and all the applications that are linked to your cloud account will be visible in all apps as well. The customer and the user is able to check the updates of their licenses to see maybe if there is an update or a new build available, there will be an update button available. And from there on, they can update their license. 
Um, as well, this will in the future replace the cloud window. Um, as well, you have all the links that are available in the cloud window with the printer profiles or knowledge base and so on. But also very nice here is we have a statistics tab. So for now, I don't have any media or jobs printed or ink usage of my licenses, but the customer will see that here they will have the statistics of all the printed jobs that are being printed with their cloud account license. So here they can uh, keep track of their productivity, uh, either in media usage and ink usage per, uh, for every uh, printing device. So new here is our uh, SAI Cloud, uh, SAI Connect application. Okay, no questions. So SAI Connect were to try and let me know if there are any hiccups, but very nice applications, especially you can see the st statistics and uh, if there are updates available for a specific um, license. Okay, to come back to Lee's question, um, HP Cutter pulls the counter cut file from the production manager on Cutter and when it reads the barcode, it just cuts on its own. Does, not, does this not happen on the reorder function? I don't see any link between this. Um, maybe you can send me a, you can try it, uh, Lee. <clears throat> the main, the main purpose of this feature, we order prints is to, we order the prints, store them. And if you need them in the future, for future purposes, you can uh, re-add the jobs in the queue. Sylvain, if your production manager PC is not link to the web how do we download the drivers so good question um in this case we have the printer files and we can provide them so of course flexi system requirements are recommending or yeah recommending network connection so in first case we are 2022 and we are trying uh, for our subs and so on to have a network connection to their system. Of course, it can happen that there is no network connection available. So we recommend to try mobile data, for example, to download the driver files, or we can connect, uh, or we can provide them uh, the driver files uh, to the reseller, and then you'll have to copy them uh, into the output drivers folder. Um, that's the whole setup. It's a bit of a challenge. There is no server where the dealers can download directly. We don't want to have um, our dealers or resellers having access to the driver files. So you will have to get in touch with me or technical support uh, for this. Um, question of Lee, why do I have to re-add my printer and cutter in production manager when updating to a new version of Flexi? So when, when installing a new Flexi version, there is an, a checkbox where you can check to copy your, um, the settings of your previous version. If this is not selected, there will be, uh, a uh, an installation from scratch. I also, okay. In this case, there will be something wrong copying the files, maybe ad admin or permission rights. I can always take a look on that. I generally recommend to install um, from scratch. Uh, and add the drivers from scratch. So you make sure everything is brand new. That's my recommendation. But of course the option is there and it should work. So let me know if copying from previous installation works or not. It's possible that the drivers are not 64 bit um, or something went wrong with copying. So 
there are a lot of parameters that can uh, can be wrong here. Are there any other questions? So related to Flexi subscribers, they have the um, possibility to update their Flexi 22 license to Flexi, tw uh, Flexi 21 license to Flexi 22. For all perpetual standard licenses, there is an upgrade um, available, of course, with an upgrade price. What is the um, effect tool name, uh, Lee? In the meantime, for all the attendees, um, the webinar is almost ending. Are there any other questions? Windows 11 full support, Marcel, yes. Unlink tool. What is the unlink tool? I have no idea, Lee, sorry. So yes, Flexi 22 is compatible very important, Windows 8.5, Windows 10, and Windows 11. Customers with a Windows 7, we try to recommend to an upgrade for Windows 10. We see some issues here. Um, yeah, Ariel, good, good point. So we also now have an option in Production Manager, a small, um, small add-on to our jig layout that was released in version 21. So now we can save the jig template as an EBS. So that's, uh... ah, yes, Ariel. See, we try to listen to our customers. So now we have an option to save the jig templates for flatbed, UV, and so on as an EBS. So you can use the EBS to, for example, uh, cut out a mill or route out a mill How about this for lunch? It's possible. Possible. It's most most of the time it will be very nice the lunch. The separate effects tool flickers. Hmm. Um, yeah, Lee, I, I can't check this right now. Sorry. Christoph, could we organize a sort of webinar for techies to go deeper into certain topics? Um, yes. Can you let me know via email which topics you want to cover and go deeper in? Because we have to also um, make sure that we have all the knowledge. So, um, can files post edit be sent to Onyx? Um, I don't, don't know what the question is, but we have sent to Onyx shortcut, yes. Um, there are currently no new features in the design part of Flexi. Um, there are some. There was an import um, PLT. We can import in PLT files in the designer now. Um, we have updated a few um, libraries, color libraries, but there are no new functionalities in the designer. Plus, if you hover the mouse over the tool in 22, it doesn't show the little help pop that tells you what the tool is. In my case, it does. Uh, Lee, maybe there is something wrong with your installation or with your, I don't know, maybe you can do a new installation from scratch. Um, I create swatch what Ariel is saying. So you can create a swatch, CMYK, and in the advanced tab, you can add K to your swatches. Uh, so 5%, for example, and it will apply a CMYK swatch with um, steps of K values as well. Try another tool, just not the general tools. I have all the tools are showing me the, um, the help message, uh, Ariel. Um, Lee, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, I will uh, already stop the recording and we can go over the questions. So I will stop the recording now. Thank you very much.